Thank you everyone for attending this session on end-to-end -end motion QA in radiation therapy treatment planning. And just to put a face to the name and, and the voice that you're hearing, uh, I am Rocco and I'm the clinical application specialist at MODIS QA. And I do have over 20 years uh, clinical experience as a radiation therapist where I was involved in treatment planning, uh, treatment delivery, as well as research. And my current areas of focus are uh, clinical applications, customer communication, sales and marketing, um, as well as product development. And just a background on Modus QA, we are located in London, Canada, and we specialize in making high quality radiation therapy QA phantoms. And uh, we have over 20 years of experience developing new products. And there's over 5,000 quasar phantoms currently in use around the world at over 3,000 treatment centers. And so you may recognize uh, some of the devices on the screen here. Um, we do specialize in targeting QA phantoms, motion QA phantoms, as well as geometric distortion devices for MRI. And we also provide 3D dosimetry uh, solutions for physicists around the world. And we do specialize in uh, working with physicists and try to get the best solutions possible in the market to be able to help them be assured of their quality assurance and to provide better outcomes for patients. And a brief overview of today's talk on end-to-end -end motion QA and radiation therapy treatment planning. Uh, we're going to go over why there is a need for 4D IGRT or image guided radiation therapy um, focused on re reduction of treatment volumes and the methods that we use to mitigate patient motion. And then I'm going to dive into how we use our motion QA phantoms to provide end-to-end -end QA, and that will cover CT-based systems, MRI-based systems, and then at the end, I'll provide a, dem a demonstration of the motion software itself. So why is there a need for 4D IGRT in treatment planning? Well, you may be familiar with this graphic on the left side of your screen here, and this uh, is a diagram that shows you typical process when uh, we are delineating volumes for treatment. So you start off with a gross tumor volume, and this is usually something that you can see, or it may be a tumor bed, uh, which is easily outlined. Uh, so that'll be the initial step. And then we typically add a margin to that uh, to encompass any uh, microscopic disease or any processes that we can't um, decipher, so we can't tell. And then after that, you're gonna add a planning target volume. And that planning target volume takes into account any uncertainties that are involved uh, with the planning process itself or with uh, treatment delivery. Okay, so having said that, uh, most new advances in radiation therapy equipment today are designed to either better outline the gross tumor volume or to be able to see in real time what um, where the tumor location is and to be able to adjust to that somehow. So as you can see on the right side here on the screen, the most tumors are not stationary and the amount that they move does vary from site to site, but typically if you're anywhere near the diaphragm, uh, you know, those tumors can be moving uh, from 20 to 40 millimeters. So it is quite significant. And if you weren't taking that motion into account, you would need to add a significant um, planning volume in order to make sure that this clinical target volume is encompassed with the proper dose. So by using some sort of 4D IGRT uh, method, we can increase the dose that is delivered to the actual tumor and by quite significantly decreasing the amount of dose that's going to healthy tissues. So what we can do there is escalate the treatment doses, which has been proven to show uh, it provides uh, patients with better outcomes and a higher probability of cure. So I'll now review the ways that we uh, mitigate patient motion. And some of the common methods that you see used traditionally in clinics are what, what uh, is encompassed around beam gating. So Beam gating is delivering uh, a radiation beam while a target is within a specific window. So uh, when the tumor is in that window, it the beam is on, and as it moves out of that area, it turns off. And this is how you, um, you mitigate that motion by essentially freezing time and having the treatment only being delivered when the tumor is in a certain location. And so some ways are doing that. You can see on the left side of the screen, uh, we have um, automatic breathing control. So it's a device that controls the, the volume of, of air that's in the patient's lungs. Uh, so that's one way of minimizing the, the motion or the movement of the diaphragm. Uh, another method here is using a, uh, a constriction or, or a device that actually puts pressure on the diaphragm. So the breaths become more shallow and that therefore the overall motion will be reduced. And then at the bottom here of the screen, you have 
uh, different methods of surface guided radiation therapy systems or SGRT systems, which you'll hear me say quite often. And these typically encompass some sort of a deep inspiration breath hold technique. So you see here there's the RPM system, uh, we have a Vision RT system and a CBRAD system, but they're all designed to be able to monitor that uh, anterior surface of the chest and being able to coordinate that with an internal motion. Okay, so these are all methods that are very, very common and you're very familiar with and what's advancing and what people are moving to uh, now that's got uh, radiation therapy very excited is to be able to, to, be able to perform live gating or, or adaptation while the, the treatment is incurring. So you'll see this on the MRI Linux that are coming into the market um, as well as some other advanced systems that offer you know live CT imaging where, where you can provide, provide live gating while you're actually visualizing the tumor region or to one, one day we'll get to a point where we're actually tracking the tumor and the, the machine itself is adjusting position. So again, these are all ways that we, we uh, design to mitigate patient motion and uh, Modus QA does provide products that you can use within um, all of these different systems to be able to QA, uh, QA your processes and be confident uh, with your treatment delivery. So in addition to the different methods and the different systems used for mitigating uh, patient motion, we also have a wide variety of treatment systems on the market. So very commonly you have your the top left of your screen, it's a Electiversa and your variant true beam, which are typical linear accelerators found in most clinics. On uh, the bottom left, you have um, your rad exact system from Accuray. And then we also have a, a reflection system here, which is a PET uh, based CT uh, treatment system. And what that does is it allows, to, allows better delineation of the actual uh, functional part of tumor volumes, and we have developed um, applications for that with our phantoms. And on the right side of the screen, we have our MR, MRI-based systems, and those include uh, Vuray Meridian, Electa Unity, and then we also have a, a wide range of MRI simulators. And so the reason I actually have this slide up here is just to show you that regardless of what system you're using, uh, you'll be able to find a motion solution with one of our, our available products. So the three main products I'm going to review with you today are on the screen here. And at the top, we have the PRESP, which is our programmable respiratory phantom. Uh, the bottom left is our PRESP motion platform. And on the right side of the screen, it's the MRI 4D. And so these three, th these three devices have been designed um, with physicists and with uh, you know, major equipment manufacturers to perfect them and get them to perform um, multiple tasks, which I'll go over in more depth in the, in the following slides. So up first, we have our uh, PRESP Phantom. So as you can see here on the right side, it's uh, comprised of an acrylic body and it provides motion internally. So it would be a static Phantom, but the actual insert here, you see this one here happens to be Cedar. And uh, what it does is it provides motion inside the Phantom and it can be either two-dimensional translation motion or it can be 3D uh, when you include a rotation. And so the, the area of motion can be either uh, laterally or you can change the orientation around to have it be central. And the nice thing about this Phantom is that it was originally designed um, as a standalone device. So there are modes of operation on the actual motor. So if you feel you don't need to, um, you know, hook it up to a computer, you can do that. Um, and it also provides you with the adjustments here uh, manually as well. And one highlight I wanted to include was the chest wall platform. So this uh, chest wall platform uh, can accept modification for any, any SGRT system uh, to be able to track the, the motion of the chest. And then that will be uh, corresponded with um, internal motion of the tumor itself, or sorry, the insert itself, which, which can have tumor models within it. And um, a highlight of this phantom is that the reproduction of the waveforms that you use to actually um, to play the, the insert motion, um, it has a very high resolution. So it is um, 10, 10 milliseconds, which is 100, 100 samples per second. So it can it has a very high resolution in terms of producing waveforms and a high accuracy in, in terms of, of replaying um, insert positions. And I'm just gonna highlight on the left side of the screen, it, it is a true end-to-end -end, uh, phantom. And with that, you can perform um, many different use cases with it. You can either pr practice a planning session, a treatment session with the Phantom itself. 
Um, there are also ways to um, to apply a predetermined treatment uh, that was used for a patient. You can actually apply it to the phantom, and then with using ion chambers or different devices, you can verify um, what the what the actual outcome of, of the dose delivery was. And just on the left screen side of the screen here, there are some um, targets or inserts that are, are zoomed in a bit. Uh, the first one shows you a cutaway of what you what you can do with this device is you can have a tumor model that is used for planning purposes and um, you can have a pre-drilled for any custom um, ion chamber holder that you have and then you plan your treatment to this volume and you can verify the accuracy of your gating process or any even static processes if you choose um, and then this insert here is for the pet ct or uh, any pet functions that you would like to use so it, it has a hollow sphere where you can insert um, radio tracers uh, we also have this one on laying on its side which is actually a split tumor um, model and that way you can um, you can follow the tumor and be able to put place a, a piece of film in there to be able to verify the dose and um, and sometimes people you know they'll ask you know why are you choosing these materials that you're, you have here they're not you know may not be water equivalent etc um, the main thing is we have to remember that these are used for for physics tests and you're testing a process so it is relative dosimetry and this the there are correction factors for the materials and there's also your treatment planning uh, system can make those adjustments as well so it is a very useful tool and, and this phantom is very popular a lot of features that people like and it's it's simple to use and um, i'll highlight some of the other um, inserts that we have with it on the following slide here so we do offer an extensive library of inserts for the prest phantom and you can see here there's quite a few of them i'll just go over them very quickly uh, but by all means, if you ever have any questions on any of these, definitely feel free to contact us. Uh, we do have here just a cedar insert that can have a, an ion chamber placed within it and the same thing, but in acrylic. And with these uh, inserts, you can have, an, have it drilled for the ion chamber, but you can have it centrally located or offset if you want to use 3D motion. Uh, we offer film cassette inserts where you can uh, place a piece of uh, film. For film dosimetry, this one was originally designed for uh, pre-EBT3 film where it was light sensitive, so that's why it's the dark color, um, but it is definitely useful for, for 2D uh, dosimetry. Uh, we offer imaging quality inserts for your CT planning system, so this is a static, a static insert that has uh, spatial resolution features as well as slice profile. Uh, this 4D CT imaging insert is useful um, to test for any motion artifact and also volume reconstruction so there's different um, objects within it that you can verify that your treatment planning um, system is able to calculate those volumes correctly with with any motion artifacts uh, we have a larger array of uh, cedar inserts where it's either drilled for an ion chamber you know with or without a tumor um, offset or centrally located so there's quite a few uh, varieties in in that um, category um, and we also have a split uh, insert where you have a tumor model within it. Um, you can place a piece of film for dosimetry and then you're, you're planning a treatment to that actual volume and verifying it with your, with your motion protocols. Um, this is the same PET CT uh, insert that I reviewed earlier. So, and again, used, used for radio tracers or any other uh, liquid you wish to place within that volume. Uh, we uh, have a hollow insert and this one uh, is designed to place liquids in there or any mini phantoms or devices you want to use as part of your tracking and we do offer specialty inserts where you can uh, as an example we've had uh, requests from synchrony customers for a tracking module uh, different there's different features that we can uh, provide for customers so if you're considering a PRESP phantom and you don't see what exactly what you're looking for in terms of, of an insert uh, definitely ask us because we have the ability to you know to make things for our customers or to make sure that they're they have all the tools they need for QA um, as example like if you needed to have OSLDs drilled into one or TLDs we, we have the capabilities to to provide that for you so moving on I've included this slide here just to demonstrate a typical use case or how how this looks um, when you're using it clinically so just as you would you know plan a treatment on a lung patient as an example in the image on your left you know you as I said you highlight a tumor volume uh, you're going to apply 
different margins and, and, a, and a dose distribution in order to achieve your treatment that you're looking for. Well, you can do the same thing with our inserts. So essentially there you can see there's a, a CDR insert with a, a tumor model. Uh, you can use that in your imaging session with your CT and uh, CT simulation, and you can go through the entire process just like you would with a patient and verify that treatment on an actual treatment system. So on the right side of your screen, you see a, a fluoroscope of, uh, of basically a gating session. So when the, the module or the tumor itself is within the window, it is delivering the treatment, and as it moves out of range, it is turning off. So you can validate this again with, um, with those inserts that have uh, dosimetry capability, or you can you know, master your imaging techniques as well. And you're, again, you're testing a whole process. So you're testing what's happening inside the patient or the phantom, and you're correlating that information with that chest wall platform, which is a representation of what is happening on the surface. So again, just, just highlighting the whole end-to-end -end process uh, of testing. And this is just one of many, many use cases that I, I realize is very simple, but it's just to give you a visual of what the actual testing process could look like. So here's another potential use case uh, with using the um, PREST motion assembly. So in the middle of your screen, we have our multi-purpose body phantom. And this device here was originally designed for treatment planning QA. So it, was, it includes a number of inserts that can check the uh, imaging quality of your CT scanner, uh, different volumetric um, measuring tools, as well as you know, hound field unit consistency um, materials and things like that. Um, but what we can do is you can actually add a respiratory uh, motion assembly to this phantom, and it increases the, the functionality quite a bit. So now you have the ability to, if you're performing any kind of SBRT type planning where you want to have multiple dose locations, um, this phantom has uh, all these different ion chamber locations. And so you'll be able to verify, again, multiple dose, dose points. So in theory, you can you know, perform a, a, a treatment plan on a patient. You can actually apply this plan to the phantom itself and then deliver that treatment and verify all the dose points. Or you can also just you know, image the phantom itself and use it as a, as a pseudo patient to be able to QA your entire process. So um, you know, in addition, this is a similar concept as, as the PREST phantom where the motion is, is internal but now you have all these different uh, dose points where you can verify uh, your plan. So moving on to our next phantom, this is the uh, Quasar PREST motion platform, and it has the exact same drive system, the same motor assembly as the uh, PREST phantom. So all those features are the same, but instead it's actually moving a surface platform where you can place any phantom such as the multi-purpose body phantom on it and as long as it's within 20 kilograms, it has the ability to uh, provide motion. And some, some clinics prefer to use this type of a setup where you don't have uh, the motion limited to you know, an insert within the body. You, you're now moving the entire apparatus. So again, the, you know, the software and everything is, the, is exactly the same. And um, it has that ability to, to move any of your own phantoms or you can choose to operate it with a multi-purpose body phantom. And that way, it, um, it gives you an additional tool to uh, perform your, your motion uh, testing. So one feature I'd like to highlight on the platform itself is our hysteresis generator. So what a hysteresis is, is it provides a, it provides a twist. So you actually get a, a varying pathway. So on your translation away from the motor, you know, it's going to move in one path, one path. And as it returns, it, it goes on a, a different path. And you can adjust that easily by uh, placing a pin within a specific channel there. You can see in the middle of your screen, uh, you change that position of the, of the pin and it provides you with that hysteresis or twist. Now, it, it's a mechanical way of doing it, but it, does, it, is, it is very accurate and it, it would be similar to what happens you know, if you did have a patient moving where there was a bit of a lateral uh, motion to, to the volume itself. And um, it's just a simple way to do it and it provides you another dimension rather than just being um, that 2D dimension, it does it provides a twist to increase the complexity um, of the testing. So again, it's a it's a mechanical option. So you can you can place the pin in its location to verify the the amount, or you can choose to to have it just stationary, so you have true linear uh, translation. So next, I'd like to introduce you to the MRI 4D Motion Phantom. 
So this is a, a cross-platform Phantom that you can use on practically any system, but it is MR safe. And it has um, been tested to be image and artifact free up to seven Tesla. So it's actually uh, quite useful in those high field uh, machines as well. Um, but we are partnered with Vray, and uh, we've developed features of this Phantom along with them to be able to provide uh, high quality QA on their Meridian systems. So um, they, they definitely support our Phantom and they actually use it for commissioning of their new system. So uh, we definitely have enjoyed working with Vray to um, to you know, establish proper QA techniques and the, the devices that are useful for those processes. And we also are an active member of Starlet, which is the System Technologies for Adaptive Real-Time MR Image Guided Therapies. And this is a group of leading scientists or research group that are you know, developing the, the tools that are used for adaptive therapies that are, that are coming down the pipeline. So you know, we've, re we've received a commitment from um, the auditing body that recommended our Phantom be used uh, by those leading manufacturers to develop um, tracking technologies and gating systems. So, so we're very proud of that, and we we could collaborate with them to provide to perform uh, high-end QA and be able to uh, bring the latest uh, technologies to customers. So the MRI 4D Phantom is an advanced tool that's mostly used within MRI, but it can definitely be used within CT and PET applications. And the reason for that is the hollow body. So this body can be uh, filled with various contrast media and you can alter the level of, of contrast for your imaging. So whether you need to optimize it for MRI or optimize it for CT, uh, you have the ability to do that. And so the body itself, um, the inserts and the targets are all adjustable in terms of what material is within them. So in addition, you can also uh, change your your orientation of the phantom if you choose. You can have it what we call a head first orientation or feet first orientation. You can have the motion within the center of the body or with simple adjustments you can have it on either either side of the phantom. Uh, so in addition the one of the key options on this phantom is the ability to perform latency measurements which I'll go into later but basically if you can get this a gating signal from your delivery system into the Phantom, you can perform latency measurements uh, without the need of an oscilloscope. So that's that's pretty exciting. Um, but in addition, I wanted to point out that our controller itself is an ultra low latency controller. And what that means is it doesn't introduce significant latency to your testing process. So uh, if you had a device that had unacceptable latency, you can't really rely on your results that you're getting because the Phantom itself is introducing an error. So we have the uh, lowest latency available on the market and uh, it provides you with accurate results when you're doing those types of tests. And in addition, um, we have produced a, a Phantom that, again, it's MR safe up to seven Tesla. It has superior imaging quality and, um, and it is able to perform uh, with those systems. So uh, we've gotten rave reviews over the image quality and it, it is becoming um, a high demand item. And so in addition to that, we do offer, you know, a quick one connection setup for I'm um, setting up with the cables. It's a very quick um, setup. So if you're doing periodic testing, it's you know it's not a system that you're not going to want to you're going to avoid testing with because it's so cumbersome to set up. It's very very easy to use. I'll go into de in depth more about the software uh, later. And we also offer a number of inserts similar to what you're what we were talking about earlier in terms of dose verification. But on the right side of your screen, you can see um, the offerings that we have. And um, I'll go into a little more detail on this next slide. So taking a closer look at our inserts, uh, the first one on the left side is our film cassette. And this has a very large surface area for your EBT3 film. And the nice thing about it is you have a tray that can be inserted and removed that is not connected directly with the fluid. So there's no really no mess when you're when you're dealing with removing your film or placing a new film in. Um, you can you can keep your contrast materials in the insert itself and then just very easily slide the film in and out of position. We also provide uh, solid uh, targets. So this can be used for planning a treatment to the volume or for uh, an object that can be tracked. And there is also the option of using a fillable sphere. So this sphere is uh, 30 millimeters uh, with an internal diameter and you can place uh, a contrast material in that as well and use it as a separate uh, area where it can be targeted or, or dose delivered to as well. Um, in the middle, we have an ion chamber insert that has a sphere as its target. 
which you can visualize here. And it also has a channel grooved into it to be able to view where the isocenter would be or the center of the ion chamber would be. Um, in this orientation, it is um, central. So with this, if you wanted to use it for 3D motion, you would have the offset option. And again, you have the same, a similar uh, solid target. You have a fillable target option. And we also have an MV tracking target. And this was brought on by the use of um, uh, the Unity system where they, they'd like to uh, use their uh, MV imaging to be able to view a target as well. But this can also come in handy when you're doing uh, CT imaging or even on a treatment unit. So there are different features that we, we can use with that. And then to the right, it's a similar setup, but with this case, it's a cuboid tracking target. And this one's in the offset orientation. And with the cuboid, this is um, helpful for users who want to view uh, the sagittal plane, but off of axis, where you only want to see, um, you don't want to see the actual ion chamber sleeve in there. And what you can do with that is, or why it's nice, is if you use the sphere target, as it's moving in, in multiple dimensions, it's going to change volume. Uh, whereas for some uses, like as an example in latency measurements, you may want that volume to remain the same and just to be able to do that testing. So this was actually like a vendor request and we provided that and it's become a very um, highly sought after feature and it's very useful uh, in doing those sorts of tests. So Modus also offers accessories for the MRI 4D Phantom. And one that I'd like to focus on a bit here is the V-Ray Meridian Cradle. And this was designed to allow quick and easy setup on the couch itself. And it also offers a way to, to easily place the phased array coils that are required for imaging. So you can see here on this image, the, the phased array coils will slide into the um, cradle itself and it's easily wrapped around. And the, it's designed so that the components of the, of the phased array coils do not interfere with the Phantom itself. Uh, and we have also inc included a way to be able to change positioning. So you don't always have to have the motion in this location. You can just uh, simply swap a couple of pieces and you will now be able to add motion in the center. So this is something that's available to, to our customers. And uh, again, this just shows us trying to work with our, our major equipment manufacturers to provide the, the best solutions for our customers. So a topic of discussion that garners a lot of attention when we talk about our MRI 4D system is its ability to detect uh, overall latency when your linear accelerator. And why that is important is we have to accommodate for any delays in beam on and beam off triggering with motion management and you have to include margins. So if you actually have a, an accurate understanding of what the delay is, you can accommodate for that and actually reduce your treatment volumes. So again, going back to uh, it, you know, in escalating our doses, providing better outcomes for people. So the MRI 4D has this feature built in. So if you're able to get the gating signal from your linear accelerator and you input it into our coaxial connections, you can do these measurements without the need of an oscilloscope, but it also does a, a, an automated analysis of what those measurements are, as you can see on the graphic on the left, which I'll, I'll discuss all this in the demonstration uh, to follow. But on the right, you can see a user quantifying their latency using our phantom uh, with that cuboid target that I had mentioned. And you know, they've set a range of the beam on and the beam on time, and then they measure the latency based on, on this process. So at minimum, you're gonna wanna know uh, what your latency is at the beginning, but it, it is an ongoing QA that needs to be done because as you're well aware, the, the systems have so many components and so many moving parts that um, there, there doesn't, it doesn't take much for there to be an increase in that latency. So if you're not doing a regular QA and making sure those numbers haven't changed, um, you won't be able to rely on the planning processes that you're using. So moving on from the MRI 4D and something that I touched upon at the beginning of the presentation is there is an increased use of surface guided radiation therapy systems in radiation therapy. And a lot of users are starting to want to use these systems to their advantage during uh, motion management. So whether it's a, an auxiliary system where it's just making sure patients are not, are not uh, moving, or they're actually trying to correlate the tumor motion with the actual chest wall motion. So all three of our phantoms have a uh, surrogate platform that can be used. Uh, the MRI-40 has this as an option, but it actually comes with the PRESP uh, family. 
And you can see on the image on the left, it's actually a screen capture from an SGRT system where it's showing the dot pattern of that platform. So it's been it's being used now in, in this manner, and it's a, it's a very useful tool in being able to bring the surface guided aspects of radiation therapy uh, into motion management and bringing it at the forefront of actually using it for gating. So now I'd like to discuss the way these phantoms are controlled. Uh, the PBRAS family of phantoms, they have the same motor and controller. And with that, you have the ability to actually control the phantom from the motor itself. So it doesn't need to be connected to software. So with this knob that you see on the left side of your screen, you can put it into two different modes where it's positional or rotational. And I'll talk about those a little bit later in the demo. And then there's also a mechanical way to adjust the amplitude. And so this is only available on the CT-based phantoms. Um, but with those phantoms, you also have the option of connecting to our software suite. And what that does is it allows you to import uh, waveforms from an, an SGRT system, and you can replay those waveforms uh, on the actual phantom. So you can connect uh, directly uh, with an Ethernet cable to your laptop, or you can actually connect through with a, a, a local area network or, or that sort of a setup. So uh, just to go over it again, so the, the PREST family has the ability for manual operation at the motor and software, whereas the MRI 4D Phantom uh, only has control with our software. So a software feature that I'd like to focus on a bit before we get into the demonstration is our Deep Inspiration Breath Hold Mode. So all three devices have this ability, and, and what it really does is it provides efficiency for physicists that like to use a breath hold technique in their treatment protocols. And um, again, this shows MODIS's response to uh, feedback from their customers, and this was a physicist's response where uh, they asked for it and we delivered it, and it's actually become a very uh, popular tool within the software. And um, again, just wanted to bring some attention to it so that you're aware it exists, and we are the only uh, phantom manufacturer that includes this with their software. I will now provide an overview of our motion software. And this is a simple application to use. Uh, you can see on the screen, the bottom left, there's two main windows. And the first one is phantom control. And this is where you're gonna operate your motion phantom. And the second window is wave editor. And this is where you can make adjustments to any uh, captured or imported waveforms. I'll start off with the phantom control. Uh, there are three modes of operation here. And the first one's position mode. And with this, you can uh, move the phantom to a set position um, from the central axis, and it'll be in a, remain in a static position. So currently it's at zero. I'm gonna grab the slider bar, move it a bit to 10, and it's gonna place the insert at that location. And so this is useful for making you know, uh, static adjustments uh, so that you don't have to go back into your, your treatment room and um, be able to make adjustments as you go. So as an example, you can, you can be delivering a beam at this fixed location. And if you're trying to test a, a beam off situation or a gating situation, you could potentially um, just move, your, move the device itself and just verify that your, your operation is performing as you want it to. Uh, so that's just a simple positional mode and it, you know again has the full range of, of 20 uh, positive to 20 negative very easy to use and um, and it has the option of inverting your display for any of our our waveforms and that's just a preference of how you wish to view it um, and for moving on from there we do have a rotational mode and this mode is the same as the manual mode that's on our PRES phantoms and so what this means is it provides full range of motion of the insert uh, from plus and minus 20 millimeters. And um, it provides full, full rotation of our, of our motor. So if there's a couple ways to use this feature, you can, you can just play it if you want to have um, a very simple waveform and you don't really want to um, you know, have to import waveforms or edit any waveforms. Um, and that'll provide you the full range of motion. And in addition, if you've set, if you've set a, a mechanical limit to the translation, so as an example, if you wanted it to move plus or minus five millimeters, if you were to set that on the actual phantom itself, and then you come out and use rotational mode, it'll, it'll move at that plus or minus five millimeters automatically. Okay, and then from outside the room here, you can uh, make adjustments to your, 
frequency. So in addition to this function, there is a, an actual simple way to make adjustments for your amplitude rather than have to change anything mechanically on the phantom itself. Um, and that's by importing a waveform or, or opening a waveform. And we do provide you with a, a pretty detailed library of different options. I'm going to choose sinusoidal for now just for simplicity. And so I've opened this waveform and it's actually now ready to um, play on your phantom. So you can just press play. And there's something quickly I want to just highlight here. Um, so you have a green waveform and this is the, the planned or intended pathway. And the red line shows you how accurately the phantom is reproducing that position. And this is important because at times, you know, we, we may accidentally leave a piece of tape on the insert. Um, there may be some sort of other mechanical friction or uh, an increased load that's causing the um, phantom to not accurately reproduce that waveform. And that's going to give you a visual representation. So if there was something wrong, this red um, pathway will deviate from the green pathway. <clears throat> and in addition, uh, we do have a feature where you can export all of those um, those data files, and it provides you a C CSV format, and you can compare how accurate um, those those reproductions were. So that's useful to know um, that your waveform was reproduced exactly as intended, and that way you can rely on the results that you've obtained. So in addition, so again, I've shown you here that we have a sinusoidal waveform that's moving uh, plus or minus 15 millimeters. But as you can see here, we don't have any way of changing the amplitude on the fly. Um, and the reason for that is that we do have that option on the MRI 40 uh, Phantom, but unfortunately I'm not connected to one right now. So when you do connect to the MRI 4D, you do have an additional mode, which is called sinusoidal. And you can actually use um, uh, slider bars to control the amplitude as well as the frequency. But because of the design of our, our PRESP family, uh, it was designed for you know standalone operation without software. And then later on, uh, it was developed to have software added. Um, but we can very simply change the, the amplitude, and that is by using the wave editor. So within the wave editor, there's many different options. Uh, I'll show you um, some of them here, but the main one I wanted to show you is just uh, adjusting that amplitude. So currently it's at plus or minus 15. I can very easily slide the slider bar and change it to whatever uh, free, uh, amplitude I'd like. Okay, so once I've done that, I can also change your offset if you don't want to be um, truly centered. And then I can go back to my phantom control. It's gonna ask me to save. And as you can see, now that I've saved it, I'm, I'm playing back a waveform, and the software automatically changes to oscillation mode. And that's what oscillation mode does, is it'll actually reproduce um, any, any, any waveform that you program or import, and you'll be able to, to play it back uh, with, uh, with high degree of accuracy on the Phantom. So now I press play, and as you can see, it's, it's now doing an adjusted um, amplitude and frequency from what was originally intended. <clears throat> so to move back to editing, because of these these three main um, operation modes have been covered, I will um, show you how to edit any uh, waveform that you have imported or uh, one that's been supplied by Modus. So I'm just going to open a, a typical pattern. <clears throat> it's a little bit less regular than the sinusoidal pattern I showed you. So I'll go into the wave editor. And in, in this feature here, again, you can, you can make adjustments to the amplitude or the offset. Um, you can apply different filters to the waveform itself. <clears throat> so here you have a, a low pass filter that'll, um, I think, I believe I've mentioned before that the, the phantom can reproduce the waveform um, with a high resolution. So it samples the wave pattern every uh, 100 times per second. Um, so sometimes there's going to be situations where, you know, this jitter is not desirable. So you can remove that. Um, you can set um, a low-pass filter, and it smooths out the, fan, the waveform for you. Um, other filters that you can use is a, there's a drift filter. If it happens to drift away from um, the center, it actually re realigns it for you. You also have a cardiac or <clears throat> band stop frequency that it can remove. So if there is a an unwanted cardiac rhythm uh, frequency that's detected by the 
by your surface guided system or whatever system you're using to capture a waveform, you can remove that as well. We do also provide um, a spectrum analyzer that shows you, it changes the domain from time to frequency. So you can analyze your waveform to see which frequencies are contributing to your, your pattern. Um, so in addition, there's also very simple cut, copy, and paste functions. So you can, as an example, when you bring in um, a waveform that's been um, imported, you quite often get um, different artifacts or different motion things that people have moved or uh, coughed, and it's something that's undesirable. Like So as an example, I'm going to say this bit of this waveform here is not desirable. So I'm going to highlight it. Very easily I can cut. I can also go back and fix my errors by just hitting Control Z. And um, there's many different things I can do. So I can copy, let's say, let's say I really do like this pattern here. I can copy it and I can just continually paste it in multiple locations. So now what I've caused here is a very strange pattern which you really wouldn't use clinically for testing. But I did want to highlight another issue, or sorry, another feature. And what that is, is testing your waveform. So when you, again, when you bring in or import a waveform, um, if it has extreme changes in frequency or amplitude, the, the phantom may not physically be able to perform that waveform. So you can, you can easily perform a test. So you can see here, you just press test wave, and it's failed. And there's five errors. So I can actually show you where each one is, but uh, to save some time, I'm just going to press fix all. And now it's, it's made adjustments so that you can actually pass everything. But again, I'm just going to remove this. And I wanted to also highlight that you can zoom in very, um, and to find detail to each individual point. So as I said, 10, mil 10 millisecond sampling rate. And again, you can use this to you know, add, add errors to a waveform. So let's say you have a nice smooth waveform and you want to test an ability for your gating system or, or a triggering system to turn on or off. Uh, you can make very easily make um, adjustments. And there you go, I've, I've made a change to the waveform. So again, if I test this, it's gonna fail. And then it's going to show me the error. There's, there's probably a few different area, areas of errors here, but I'll fix them. And then I'll be able to perform, to play the waveform. Um, so in addition, there's, there's a few other features here where you can, you know, you can stretch your waveform. So if you've, you've acquired one that has a really high frequency, but you want to slow it down, you can, you can stretch the waveform itself. It applies it to the entire uh, waveform. Um, you can invert it if you choose to just visually, you like to see the peaks on top, it's up to you. Um, and you can also apply uh, recentering here as well. So in terms of editing, it's very simple to you know cut and paste. Um, and then you can always definitely save these and you'll be able to replay them using oscillation mode. Okay, so another thing I wanted to show you quickly under Phantom Control is uh, we do have an incorporated uh, deep inspiration breath hold, which I touched upon earlier. And with this breath hold mode, it's a way to perform a uh, breath hold QA without the need to wait for an acquired um, waveform to be able to uh, apply your dose or or to provide your testing. So this was actually a physicist request that you know they they said that it would be very useful to just have a manual mode where you you know you you initiate a breath hold and just allows for more efficient testing. So I'll show you here, I'll just, this, we're now in breath hold mode, and I'll hit play. So what it does is it starts the phantom motion uh, from plus 15 to minus 5 millimeters. Okay, and it's just going to be a nice smooth, smooth pattern. And then when I'm ready to initiate a breath hold, I just press the button, and on the next cycle, it'll create a breath hold. And it'll remain in that position until I press it again. So this allows for... Again, more efficient testing for your techniques. It, it is not patient specific, but it does allow you to um, more efficiently QA a process where you are using a breath hold and you don't want to wait, you know, through 15 minutes of beam delivery to actually deliver your dose. You can you can test your you can test your processes much quicker. And again, like during this process, you can actually change the uh, frequency as well. Okay, so there there are a few more tricks in here um, with the uh, MRI 4D, we do have an option of latency. 
um, which is an important feature that people are uh, exploring and very interested in. So again, unfortunately, I'm not connected to an MRI uh, 4D Phantom, so I don't have that available to me yet right now, but I'll cover that uh, for you in a moment here on this next slide. So this is a screenshot of our latency window within the MRI 4D software. And you see here what's connected to the MRI 4D Phantom. So you get this option where you can select latency measurements. And above that, you have an option to assign the inputs and outputs of the actual Phantom. So as an example, you do have the ability to export our positional information to a third party device, uh, which can be useful for, for QA purposes. And um, just to show you on the left side here, uh, I mentioned previously that uh, once you're connected to the MRI 4D, you do have a sinusoidal mode. And this is the mode where you can set, now set your frequency, amplitude, and your offset all with uh, slider triggers here. So you can use this to set up your waveform. And when you're doing latency measurements, you can actually set your trigger range. So in this situation, it's the green line, uh, minus five to minus 10 millimeters. Uh, it's obviously not a clinical situation, but this is just for demonstration purposes. And as the uh, target is moving, you are now getting a output trigger pulse, which is in red, and you're getting a gold, um, gold uh, line here, which is showing the beam on signal input. And so what this does is the software automatically um, calculates all the, the delays and the, and the measurements, and you are getting a detailed report of all the latency measurements, you know, what your averages and uh, standard deviations are. And it provides this all in um, numerical information, but also graphical information. And it also provides uh, a key thing here. It provides you information for the beam on signal and the beam off signal. So it's um, some, some systems only do one. It's just uh, one measurement, but this one's actually breaking it up into beam on and off, and it gives you uh, details on both, which, which again is important when you're trying to understand your latency. And um, all of the, the information that is, is gathered from this process can be exported. So if you're using another software application to, uh, to dive into the information a little more, uh, you definitely can do that. So it is a useful, useful tool. And if you're interested in, in system latency, definitely contact MODIS and we can give you um, a more detailed rundown of, of the process itself. So in conclusion, um, there are a lot of changes that are occurring in radiation therapy, and it's, it's been like this for years, um, but the, there is a workflow change where everything is moving towards adaptation and controlling motion. And uh, in order to be able to you know, visualize the, the tumor or the target during treatment, um, it does improve patient outcomes because as we discussed, you're able to uh, reduce those margins, escalate the dose to the tumor itself, and you know, it increases the chance of cure. Uh, so in order to be able to uh, deal with these you know, advancing technologies and being able to learn the processes, there are advanced tools that are required for this. And MODIS does provide uh, physicists with the best tools in order to be confident with the results that they're getting. So I appreciate your time. And I thank you for this uh, attending the session on end-to-end -end motion QA. Uh, please contact us at www.modisqa.com. And I look forward to hearing from you and discussing our, our quality assurance uh, options. And now we're gonna open the floor to a question and answer period.